Blockchain technology has created an insane opportunity for normal people to learn high value coding skills, you know, change their careers and potentially even make life changing money. I mean, I always say on this channel that, you know, one of the best ways for people to make long term life changing money with crypto is to learn blockchain coding. And I just saw a report that came out that supports this idea. It's been circulating around online. And so I want to break this down and weigh in on it because I think there's a lot of great clues are here when people are getting this space. They're trying to think like, hey, what's the opportunity actually look like? We can quantify it, back it up with data, and then give some clues on the best path that you can take if you want to jump in and capitalize on this, you know, really crazy opportunity. So I'm going to give you my insights into this report today as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. And on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this report that shows this insane opportunity for blockchain developers. Okay, so I'm going to dive into the Electric Capital Developer Report for 2021. This is going to be an analysis on the state of blockchain development over the past year. And it, it finishes in 2021, which is about the time of recording this video uh, in January of 2022. So it can give us a pretty clear picture of what the current state of things is. All right. So the first thing I want to call out is that uh, developers in terms of monthly active developers for all of Web3 is at an all time high. OK, just 18,416 developers. That's actually a pretty small number on the grand scheme of things, particularly for the amount of technology that we're turning out. We'll see that here in a minute. But we can see this has a lot of implications just in this trend line alone. Okay, it's, uh, in addition to other data points that we're going to look at in this uh, survey. But the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, something about crypto being this place for uh, people to have an opportunity to get in and, you know, make a huge life change in terms of their career. It's one of the highest paid skills in tech. All right. It's really common for people to make six figures in crypto. We don't have that much experience in the grand scheme of things. So, um, what drives that in the first place? Well, you always have to understand like simple supply and demand economics, where basically the number of people who understand how to do crypto development or Web3 development, whatever you want to call it, is pretty small in the grand scheme of things. And the demand is really big by comparison. This is not necessarily to scale. This is just, um, you know, a rough indication of what that, you know, imbalance looks like. And when you have a supply this small and demand this big, that means the price of compensation goes up. And so the supply is small and the demand is huge. So that means it's a great opportunity here. Okay. So um, let's look at a couple different factors of the supply and demand, because sometimes you get this question a lot like, hey, are you just going to saturate the market with Web 3.0 developers and the opportunity goes away? I don't think so by any stretch of the imagination, not anytime soon, because the demand is actually outpacing the supply. And if you look at, you know, how big uh, the Web3 developer ecosystem can get compared to other industries, uh, we're barely just scratching the surface for what's even possible. So you can see this, you know, diagram here and how Web 3.0 developer ecosystem compares to other like mainstream, uh, you know, programming niches. OK, so Web 3.0 has 18,416 monthly active developers. Um, and the all developers pie is, you know, 26 million, almost 27 million monthly active developers. You can see how many people learn JavaScript, Python. I mean, Web 3.0 is tiny by comparison. So we're not going to saturate that anytime soon. And also, if you look at this, uh, you know, this, this graph here, if we were just saturating the demand, uh, this would not continue to look like a hockey stick. You'd see people basically turning out of this. You'd see indication of like, you know, salaries either leveling off or going down. And I'm not seeing that data anywhere. All right. So now let's talk about like what this report shows are the in-demand skills. Because, you know, if you want to become a blockchain developer, it's really important that you pick the right thing in order to, you know, jump on this opportunity. And this report, you know, reflects a lot of what I've said a lot on this channel. So if you're brand new, um, this might be news to you. If you're not, this is just good confirmation that what you're learning is solid. Um, so it, the short answer is that the Ethereum ecosystem and the technologies uh, surrounding the Ethereum ecosystem are by far the most in-demand skills. Okay. So um, there are others for sure, but that's, that's the predominant skill. So let's look at some data to back that up. Um, you can look at um, basically this graph here that shows the monthly active developers and how many are in each ecosystem. So this purple line up here is the Ethereum ecosystem, then it's followed by Polkadot, and then you have Solana, Cosmos, and then all the basket of others, Avalanche, uh, Terra, uh, Phantom, Cardano, et cetera, et cetera, Tezos. Okay. And so um, you also see Bitcoin down here. 
Um, and so what you want to draw from this is follow the developers, okay? Because especially if you're learning uh, technical skills, you want to go where there's demand. But number two, like when you're learning, you want to be a part of a vibrant developer ecosystem where if you get stuck, you can find help. You don't want to be in an ecosystem where there's no documentation for the technology that you're working on. There's no developer tools. There's no Stack Overflow resources where you can Google your way out of frequently asked questions, all that type of stuff. And you're going to get a lot of that inside the Ethereum ecosystem, okay? Now, um, to be fair, there are other uh, alternative layer one blockchains that are seeing impressive growth, okay? We see that uh, some of the alternative layer one blockchains are actually growing faster in their early life cycle than Ethereum was. Now, that also stands to reason because the blockchain space is way bigger uh, at the, this point in time than Ethereum was in its infancy, okay? So there's there's just way more demand, way more users in general, so that stands to reason. But those ecosystems are also growing quickly. Now, here's how you can really limit your downside risk on this, um, is a lot of these alternative layer one blockchains are EVM compatible. So basically, that means that if you can write code for Ethereum, you can write code for these other blockchains as well. So you learn Solidity, the programming language to write Ethereum smart contracts, you can deploy it to Binance Smart Chain, you can deploy it to Avalanche, you can deploy it to Polygon, whatever it is, okay? And so learning those skills will give you this net vast network effect of resources and tutorials and help uh, and tools to build applications. And then you can you can kind of snake in between uh, different ecosystems that way. And now there are other ecosystems as well that have you know different tools and technologies altogether like Rust, all right? But in my opinion, for most people um, who are starting out, you know, uh, Solidity is a much easier programming language to learn and it has a much wider network effect across ecosystems. It's just a more solid bet um, and less of a speculative bet than learning something else that may not be relevant um later or just might be harder for beginners to get started on it's a way less risky bet to go with something like solidity and ethereum all right so the great thing about this opportunity for web 3.0 development is that um it's kind of bear market proof okay so i want to be very careful in how i explain that i'm not saying that you're just going to get a job and you're never going to get laid off or firing like that but uh, i do want to dispel the fear that a lot of people have is you know as cryptocurrency prices go down like they have recently um, or maybe if we go into some grueling long-term bear market that there's not going to be opportunity for blockchain developers anymore. Okay, so uh, historically, the data does not show that from this report. And also my own uh, experience does not confirm that because I was here in 2018, 2019, we saw this crazy bear market. So essentially, you can see that, you know, as cryptocurrency prices rise, you know, developers uh, tend to, you know, keep increasing even after the cryptocurrency prices start falling, okay? And then it tends to flatten out and plateau. It doesn't really seem to decline, okay? Uh, and then as crypto prices go up again, it attracts a new cohort and it retains a lot of people net over the long term and will probably level out again, okay? So that basically means, like, if you're thinking about getting into this and you're worried there's going to be a bear market and there's not going to be any jobs left, um, it'll probably have some impact on the demand, all right, but not enough to just like kill the opportunity entirely. It'll still probably grow for a while. It'll probably just level out for a while until we have this another another way forward. And part of this is because it's a Pandora's box situation. Like every time, you know, something new gets flat out of the box in terms of blockchain, like there's no stuffing it back in. We have all these things like DeFi, NFTs, Metaverse, you know, being released out into the wild and even some of the hype dies off after crypto prices fall. Like, the, we know this stuff is the future. This happened in 2018. I was here and didn't notice a significant impact on the opportunity for new developers. Now, another really interesting uh, part of this is that um, there actually is some correlation between crypto prices and developers increasing. Now, I know correlation is not causation. You know, which one causes the other? You can very well uh, see that, um, you know, crypto prices catch people's attention. That's what I'm drawing from this graph. And the developers tend to grow even after, um, you know, prices fall. But one thing you can also draw from this is that before the prices go up, that you can also see developers growing uh, until, you know, we see some sort of parabolic blow off top right here. OK, and so uh, how that could potentially inform your picking of crypto projects over long term, you know, of course, you always want to pick quality stuff, not investment advice, of course, and that I'm not telling you to put any money into anything. But the ecosystems that have, you know, stronger fundamentals, namely developer activity and real developer activity, not just like BS GitHub commits, are way more solid bets. And this stands to reason because at the end of the day, there's a common thread here, which is network effect of the ecosystems in and of themselves. You know, my long-term thesis on this channel in terms of crypto prices is that, you know, what makes cryptocurrency prices go up over time? Well, it's going back to what I was saying earlier, supply and demand economics, you're creating technology that has real utility to it. 
And that's going to attract more people to use the technology. And over time, as you have more users, uh, you know, use the technology that insofar as cryptocurrency is integrated into that technology in, that you need cryptocurrency to use it, that will increase, you know, uh, uh, demand for the cryptocurrencies themselves, sending the price up, assuming that the cryptocurrencies have sound economics, okay? And that's what uh, is the common thread here. You have developers coming in to create this technology people want to use. People want to use it. They need cryptocurrency in order to do it. And then that uh, value accrues to the cryptocurrencies themselves over time. So the short answer on that is just follow developers, whether you're, you know, trying to uh, find out where you want to work and also what you potentially, what projects you want to back. So how can you make the most of this information that I've shown you in this report? Well, you can definitely download the report. I uh, put a link in the description below. You can read through it, see all the other insights, flip through all the slides and, you know, kind of geek out on the data. But how can you actually generate this into actionable steps? Because you're never going to be able to jump on this opportunity unless you like take action and do something. You know, it's one thing to just have information. It's another thing to put it into practice. So how can you do that? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find the video there that's pinned. It's going to talk about how to become a blockchain developer in 2022. Definitely check that out because it's going to go through everything like, you know, what programming languages should you learn? Should you learn blockchain first? The entire roadmap on how to build a project, land your first job, okay? And so if you want to actually, you know, follow through on that and actually learn the coding skills, the, of course, the best way is to learn by doing. So you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find the free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. You'll learn to build your first project that way. And if you like those courses and you want to take the next step or, hey, you know, maybe you're just totally sold on the opportunity and you want to go for the throat. You know, I can show you how to, you know, learn blockchain from scratch, step by step, start to finish uh, over at dappyversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right. You know, I've helped people with zero coding experience uh, become real world blockchain developers and actually get jobs in a matter of months. OK, so um, that's all I've got. As always, smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, that really helps these videos out so more people can learn about blockchain. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.